Today on Gamers Couch, the colonists. Welcome to the couch. Happy Sunday. This is Sweaty Daniel. I am Sweaty Sarah. It is summer. We've been working. Well, you've been woodworking quite a bit to build our own colonies of things and meeples. And today we... Back, back in time for colonies. Yeah. Screw globalization. Outlander Just is going to come soon. Go straight for having good old-fashioned colonies, a little bit of slave labor, maybe pinch pinch of industrialization. Just a pinch. Like I said, Outlander is going to air in uh, September this year. So I got to get into the mood for the next season. Anyway, uh, we are talking about a board game today. Don't worry, this is no uh, San Diego Comic-Con review thing. Hmm? Um, there's currently Outlander on San Diego Comic-Con, there's a huge panel. Oh. It's like, oh, he's so not up to date. Oh, that famous Outlander comic. The, Comic Con. The the what is it called? Oh, there's a graphic novel. It's. A, I was about to, to make a joke about. It. Is no. it called then a, a written novel or a, no, a, a textual a, novel? No, like there's a, a graphic a novel, novel, novel too. <laughs> there's a graphic novel too. Anyway, let's talk board games. You're well better equipped to talk board games with me. I wouldn't say so, but we can talk about board games if you want to. I'm pretty sure you will suck at talking Outlander with me. I'm very sure about that. Yeah. But you're pretty good at talking board games so, with so they, me. So they had a circle of stones and no. then they were dancing around it. And then someone went Doctor Who and has gone through time. And uh, no. And the other eight books. See, not equipped. It's, Let's talk that's the, that's the other doctors. Let's talk colonists. I'm so sorry, folks, but it is hot. Our brains are melting. We're goofy. I don't want to be mean, but deal with it. So today we're talking about colonists, and I'm trying for the nth time to uh, get the intro done here. So it's going to be just like every week from here on out. We talk about rules and gameplay for first, uh, play a few turns, show you the general idea of how this game plays and if it maybe is something for you. And then we uh, talk about what we liked or not liked, have a little thumb writing there, and then we uh, share a few funny stories and experiences with you. This week is one of the weeks that I do have a teaser for you and Daniel has to guess. We are starting season six of Draw for Initiative next Wednesday, 9 a.m. on this channel, and I have a game that I'd like to tease and you have to guess. So um, don't spend all of your, your brain function on explaining. Keep, I, a, keep it a smidge for I'll, the end. I'll just go one word from now on and go with the Outlander thing. Exterminate. No, that's... It, it's called a witch, witch hunt. That's true. But that's, uh, yeah, anyway. So this is the moment where we have now the... The pissed off wife because no, the, you're no, the, the, tra up. the transition screen. Oh, this is really, yeah, sorry. See, pissed off wife because melting already. Let's talk about rules and gameplay, folks. It is time to colonize the world. Um, you have been tasked with building a colony and also, well, trading with other, other colonies. Um, the Colonists is a game about kind of building out your base, giving you more possibilities. Uh, essentially, you want to have resources, you want to generate resources, you want to have more resources to build stuff to get even more resources, more resources or even better resources. And um, at the end of the game, something will be worth victory points. Uh, in this case, uh, it is literally what you are building. It is your colony as well as the people who live in that colony. Now, um, this is a fairly busy game when it comes to stuff on the, on the table. So follow me around as I try to give you a little idea of what's going on. Um, 
First of all, uh, I'll start with what every player has in front of them. Uh, each of us has one of these boards. Um, I just have mine here. Sarah's is off screen. Um, yeah, or maybe a little bit. You can see it maybe here no. on the big camera. A bit. Well, no, yeah, on, on the, the big, uh, uh, on the small camera. Uh, so. Maybe. Um, yeah, we'll see. So. Uh, we will um, just play a short game here that is there's uh, actually a different board on the other side for the long game uh, the real long game involves uh, searching the floor for uh, play pieces uh, that Sarah just threw out so this this is uh, actually for longer games uh, a much bigger board more space to put stuff on but I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, so we have our uh, little area here. We have space uh, where houses will go for stuff that we can well, build up. We have uh, some uh, spaces are already printed on here. These are essentially our starting workers. Uh, well, it's not workers, work as in a worker placement game, um, but our starting guys that are already in the colony. And then we have, uh, well, storage spaces. Um, which um, allow us to keep resources. Uh, now this is a little bit different than from other games and it, I think it is one of the more unique aspects of, of colonists that you actually need space to store your resources and uh, at the beginning of the game you only have three spaces to store uh, goods here and um, Actually, I'm blanking on what the English name for the Speicher is, which is uh, the ge your German lesson of the day. And it's going to be somewhere on the screen I, because I want to say storage. I don't know if I they think, even have two words. I, I think this uh, might be called a silo, which I think is the, the correct translation. Yeah, or a speicher is also the thing that you have on top of the house, uh, like attic or something that's in German also a speicher. I'm, but uh, storage is also speicher. It's, it's, it's the thing... Where you save data, it's, it's, that's it's, also a speicher. It's both, See, there we well, do have a lot of words for one German word. Well, I'm, I'd be surprised if colonists had zip drives or something like that. But um, they do have or, terabytes. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, yeah. that would be hilarious. And this is where your SD cards go. No, uh, there's there's a uh, there's a distinction between the the main storage up up here and uh, the um, I'll just keep calling it silo. You know what I mean Cylon. with uh, the the one down here. Um, in in terms of if you build something, and that's the first kind of big rule you have to pay attention to. Um, you can pay with resources only if you have them in your uh, main storage unit. You can swap these out uh, at any time against, let's say, the silo. So you could do this without uh, any any trouble. That's not that big of a problem. Um, but there's some uh, well limits to to how how you can do that. Uh, but that means that at the beginning of the game, uh, you can only build stuff that requires up to three resources. If you want to build something that is more elaborate or requires more resources than though than any three, you need to uh, build out your storage capabilities to actually be able to build that apart from even getting the resources. Um, but that is something you can upgrade and as you can see there's empty spaces here as well um so uh, that's uh, a good thing to start out with uh, for example uh, then we have a forge uh, on here and that is also one of the buildings that is printed on um, there's uh, one type of resource which is uh, tools and you will need tools uh, throughout the game uh, the forge will generate three tools for you every year and what that means with the years we'll see in a, in a bit um, but that is essentially what you'll have on, on your board. Um, I think I know what Speicher means or I have an idea. Because Speicherstadt in Hamburg is just docks. And you save something on a dock. Is a dock a Speicher? I don't think so. It's, no. There's no ship. Who, who knows? Maybe there's a ship down here. No? Yeah. Sorry, I can, I can stop thinking now. Okay, yes. good. Sorry. Um, uh, you can already see here these buildings have little coins with one on, on them. Uh, these are essentially your victory points. Uh, everything will be converted to uh, gold coins, money, whatever you want to call it uh, at the end of the game. And every building you build essentially already counts as uh, 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 coins. But also the guys you have will count for victory points uh, depending if they're just at home drinking beer. 
spoiler, then they'll be worth nothing. Or if they are working and to have them working, you need to build something that they can work in. Um, so let's get to how do you do stuff? Well, there is a worker placement uh, aspect in this uh, where uh, we have these uh, guys here and we have this uh, modular marketplace which uh, it has some random elements to them essentially with every game you get to set it up with everybody we already did this here um, there's a couple of rules on how, how to do that and the way this game works is uh, essentially we'll be playing one epoch which means uh, that we'll be playing over five years which are then also um, halved so we have uh, ten half years that we'll be playing for um, each turn is essentially uh, it starts with some prep for the year some things uh, will get revealed like uh, new tiles that will be added to this market sp uh, space at the end of the year um, and some some uh, organizatorial busy work so so to speak and then w going with the starting player you get to do three actions and with three actions means uh, you uh, start at, w at one of the markets at the very beginning of the game and then you move your guy around and whenever you move him to one of these spaces you'll take the action on that space uh, and that can be something as simple as go here and then you get two wood again if you take a look at my board i already have a lot of wood so actually i wouldn't even have space to get the wood which isn't necessarily um, sometimes something you want to do or you can n not take the wood uh, if you want to or can just take one if you want to get rid of that clay or uh, do some other fancy stuff just keep in mind the uh, storage rules i told you you can move stuff uh, or you can exchange them but you cannot do that once you are within an action so there's no fancy moving around while uh, uh, paying at the same time um, you, or at least you might have to think about this a little bit so that you don't make an illegal move uh, what I could do for example is go uh, here and uh, ha use this builder uh, this one builds me a hunting hut um, which will cost me three tools two wood and one clay which I happen to have can you give me the houses I'm searching it for you uh, you have the houses uh, we have not uh, you have not there's uh, a lot of parts to this game and uh, I think you make the long arm uh, thank you uh, the hunting hut since uh, the, the board is already quite full we didn't set up everything um, so uh, these uh, usually work that way that you can build as many as you want as long as you can pay for it unless it is restricted for example the um, the library here can only build be built once and that actually makes sense because um, the effect you get from that uh, gives you a certain amount of hand cut so um, uh, we are already kind of showing you so my first move might be going here I pay three of these tools and my three resources bum, 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 bum. Oh, oh. I'm gonna just leave them you show I clean and for, for that I get this hunting hut now uh, this building first of all gives me three victory points and it is one of the so-called production buildings so this will generate food uh, I already have one food so this isn't um, super useful but who knows and uh, it might be a little bit difficult to see let me let me move it mm. up to the camera but there's a little green guy on here that means to use this uh, building uh, first of all I can place it any way I want but to use this building I have to have one green uh, farmer on here that operates the building now whenever we build something uh, that requires a guy and we have someone who is idling and at his uh, home uh, you can put it on the put him on the building immediately and uh, then get the benefit uh, that being said these buildings produce at the end of the year so it's not as crucial to have someone on that building right now but in general whenever you build something that requires uh, an operator so to speak you can place an operator immediately if that is useful to you in any way or form um, so I won't place my guy on, on there right now uh, but um, and I'll have to uh, give you a glimpse at what later games might look at uh, like these green guys are not the only ones there's also yellow guys and red guys uh, that are 
better builders. So you can imagine green guys are farmers, yellow guys are citizens, and uh, red guys are traders. And as you advance through the epochs, um, you will slowly shift from a, a farming colony over to an industrial almost industrial one. colony that is more requiring traders and uh, citizens uh, to, to run things. Uh, more uh, important guys or better guys re usually require sustenance uh, and that means if you uh, put a yellow guy into a building that requires a yellow guy you have to actually pay food immediately to uh, keep him sustained um, and that also comes into play at the end of the year just keep that in mind uh, better guys are required for better buildings but they cost more resources to upkeep and you can only place someone somewhere um, if you can pay for him. Obviously, they can stay at home for free, but as I said, uh, if you have a, a, one of these guys staying at home only with a bottle of beer in hand, no victory points for you for having him but there. But maybe they're single dads and they raise kids at home and they cannot work. Then, yeah, then unfortunate hmm. situation. So, hmm. uh, each half year, each player, starting with the uh, starting player, gets three actions. That was my first. Um, I could just go and uh, go to the uh, library next, which uh, would give me one coin, which essentially is just a victory point. Um, and I also uh, get to draw two cards. Uh, now, uh, each epoch has a stack of these cards here, and uh, they are typically kept secret, but uh, just to give you an idea what's on here. Um, these cards can be uh, played uh, whenever you go to the developer tile down here. And sometimes they require costs. So, for example, uh, this thing requires me to pay three wood, but would give me on at the end of each uh, year uh, one piece of wood. So actually not a bad investment to maybe get uh, this early on. Um, or uh, sometimes these cards are one one-time actions like uh, this uh, shovel would give me three clay um, hopefully I have space to, to store that um, now uh, another Apparently you do yes now um, um, another space we have here actually we have that twice is the market which um, do I want to go to the market? I don't really want to go to the market right now, but let me explain how that works anyway. The market is uh, different from year over year, and we'll have this card that tells us what the market can do. You can do one of three actions. Uh, one is you can sell as many of these goods that are depicted here, so two wood for one coin or one clay for one coin, um, as you have, and, and do that. Or you can, in this uh, for this year, take to a uh, food. Or the third one is usually uh, you can use one of the tile actions that is on here, but that is usually restricted in some way. So as you can see, there's the librarian on here, and the librarian on this uh, field only gives you one card, while the regular one gives you a coin and two cards. By the way, uh, you're only allowed to have five cards total, um, and if you would get more, you cannot use that space because uh, you have to have at least enough space to draw one card. Um, and you cannot discard them. You yes. have to have the action done yes. that is depicted on the cards. So, so you can already see there's different types of fields on here. These black ones are uh, builder fields that, well, build buildings, which are essentially worth victory points. Then there's some quotation mark special tiles like uh, this uh, uh, librarian here that gives you cards, the developer that lets you play cards, then we have this um, mayor maybe or a big honcho, bureaucrat bureaucratic yeah, honcho. Mayor. Um, this uh, gives you a clay and uh, the starting player marker so you actually have to use that to, to get this marker to become the starting player for the next year. Um, the third type of tile are just these resource generating tiles, although there's even two different types. This, these just generate resources, then there are some that enhance or uh, upgrade resources. In this case, you can turn two wooden logs into two wooden planks, which are required by more elaborate buildings. And then there's the, the market. 
Now, uh, one uh, tile I haven't uh, pretty much explained so far is the diplomat. Uh, uh, the diplomat allows you to build a colony house. Um, as you can see up here, there are four colonies out of, I think, nine total drawn at random at the beginning of the game. And these essentially give you special abilities. Um, you can build all four of them if you wanted to, um, although you have to pay for, for each one. And you get their bonus ability as long as you have uh, their building on your space. So um, for this demo game, we just pulled four of the more diverse uh, colonies. Um, for example, we have, uh, uh, oh God, Lagerist, uh, it's a logistics yeah, colony, or maybe? Storage, uh, yeah. officer, so, not officer. So, so this foreign colony director thing. Uh, focuses on storage. It effectively enhances all your storage units and gives you a bigger uh, silo. Uh, when you build this, uh, you would... Uh, Oh, it's I, actually storage. I actually thing. placed the the wrong tiles on here, but you uh, there's different levels of these. So um, playing during the different uh, epochs, you can go up to a, um, higher levels of um, building these things. Uh, if you build one, you just pay what's depicted on here. So one tool, two, three wood, and two clay. Um, and then you place it and then you get the bonus uh, that you have from that. Um, as you immediately might be able to tell, uh, paying three wood and two clay is really difficult at the beginning of the game if you can only hold uh, three resources in your units. So these colonies typically come into play a little bit later once you upgraded your storage unit. Uh, then we have uh, the, the colony of the wise people or scribes or whatever you want. These enhance uh, these cards you can draw. Uh, in fact, uh, these uh, give you um, uh, free cards at the end of each year. Um, and also, uh, if, you, if you use the uh, um, librarian, you get to draw four cards and keep two of them. You can even temporarily go over your hand limit with that. Um, then we have uh, the, and this is all about uh, enhancing these cards and how, how you can make use of those. Then we have uh, a colony here that gives you actually a, a second guy that you can place on a market. Um, you might imagine when I said you have three actions, uh, you can only move to adjacent spaces on here uh, if you move, or you can kind of teleport to one of the markets and then use the market action. Having a second guy somewhere on the board gives you way more options uh, where you can move because you could say I do action one here, action two there, and then three somewhere else or something like that. Um, so these guys are all about uh, A, giving you more guys to move around the board and then also extending the range of your guys so you can move an additional space so you could move from here to here and uh, just call that one move, uh, for example. Uh, last but not least, we have a trader's colony there as well. Those guys are all focused about uh, giving you the ability to trade goods uh, within your own realm. So you can exchange, for example, food for wood for clay at a one-to-one -one ratio as soon as you have that. Uh, and that, uh, I think... Uh, da -da -da -da. That's uh, an alternate. I'm sorry. Uh, that's an alternate market ability. So when I go to a market, I can then exchange as many of the goods I, I have there, which can be very beneficial even early on, as you might have glanced here. There's currently only one space that generates clay. Uh, there will be another space coming into play at the end of the year that will generate uh, clay. But in the early game, clay is actually a little bit more difficult to come by. So having uh, this thing that allows you to just trade stuff around uh, just as you need it uh, gives you way more flexibility on the board. Um, uh, so uh, talking about flexibility... Um, Third action? Yes, I, I'll just go and uh, grab two, two wood and uh, place them on here. After me, it's Sarah's turn. I'm going to start at the market and I'm going to go here. I'm going to pay two wood and, and two tools and three wood. Oh, three wood. Sorry. Two tools and three wood. And I'm going to build the first array, which is the first array. And it's somewhere on the I, screen. Now, do you know? It's not a sawmill. It's a... Um, no, it's the the 
Keeper in the woods, they have a house. And um, that's what it's called. Like a ranger, maybe? Ranger's house? Ranger's hut? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna look it up. It's gonna be on the screen and you're gonna giggle because we are yes. super uh, not ranger's great. Ranger's hut. Uh, there's nothing wrong with Thruster House. Försterei. Oh. And I'm going to put one of my green doodles onto the Försterei because then I can have two wood produced at the end of the year. Yes. That you, was... Sarah could have also waited and not placed him no, on there. No, he wants to go to work. Uh, then I'm going to take two wood because I'm totally awesome like that. Mm -hmm. And number three, I'm going to take a clay and the first player marker. Thank you. I'm done. Now we move into the winter season. Yes, second now it goes back to me. Now I have another three turns. And uh, something I'll have to explain as well. Um, you can uh, enter a space that another player occupies, but you have to pay every other guy who's there um, well, for using that same space. And that depends on which epoch we are playing. In this case, for the first epoch which we set up here, you have to pay either a tool or a food uh, token and any type of uh, uh, crafting good. So wood or clay or whatever you want to get rid of. Uh, but that makes it quite expensive to use uh, a space where someone else is uh, already standing there. And there's there's a way to mitigate that. There's uh, cards that give you a bonus uh, about that and uh, that you can do. Um, anyway, uh, I think, uh, what am I going to do? Oh yeah, there's uh, actually another thing I, I have to tell you. And that is, uh, there's a limitation of on how you can move uh, with those three actions that you have. You can move wherever you want, but you have to end your turn on a different space than where you started. So I could not do the one, two, three turn to, to do that. So yeah, I can go back and forth and then somewhere else, but um, that's kind of also there to prevent other people from blocking. Uh, yep. use, uh, uh, Don't hog space. the space. Um, I have not a really good super good clue to what you I... You could play cards. Yeah, but the cards I, I can play is either I get clay, which I don't have space to store, or uh, I can do this, but I don't have three wood to pay for it. No, you can go here and pay only two wood and uh, tools and build a Fausterei. It's three wood. Oh, Still. three wood. Sorry. Same as what you just paid. Sorry. You still have two. Well, then go here. One wood, one tool, and yeah. build yourself a hoof. Yeah, a hoof with a dude. Make a dude. Yeah. Um, now, if I would play, be playing a, a, a real game... I wouldn't help you. I uh, I would uh, probably try to get to uh, the the storage unit up there and uh, get, get a better chance at uh, doing stuff. But, yeah. Come on. Yeah, I'll, I'll go here. Uh, spend one of my tools and uh, a wood to uh, get get a, a first eye. No, it's a hoof. Uh, oh, okay. So uh, which is, which is little, which so, is just a farm? Yes, just a, a, a housing for a green guy. Um, which leaves me with uh, two more mm -hmm. things. Action. I, I can do. Um, mm -hmm. I think I'll just get another two wood and then end on on the on the library, so I get another coin and two more cards in hopes that there's also good stuff in here. Thank and let's you. have a look at what what other cards we have. We have a car. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, these cards have little puns on them, uh, which are probably difficult to translate right now. But when we played the English version at BGGCon, uh, that was still punny and funny. Um, so what do I get? Um, uh, oh, if I have, uh, if I'm able to uh, build this, and I, that's something I want to build soon, then is I can use uh, another space where someone is already on there, but I don't have to pay a tool or a, a Good. food item. Or uh, I can do this, uh, and this allows me to transfer or to exchange up to two times a wood and a clay into a brick, which uh, is not terribly useful right now, but will become more useful as the game progresses. So these were my three mm, moves. And you totally blocked me, and I'm, I'm not happy with that. Not sorry. What? What? 
Anyway, I'm gonna go to the market. I'm gonna get a librarian's book, also called I, a card. I, I keep my cards up, uh, although you can't see them anyway. Ha! Uh, I don't. That uh, some things are very fortunate. Uh, I'm going here to the developer. I'm so gonna get to... This uh, tools, tools have no restriction. Don't take up any uh, uh, storage space. And then I do have a um, commission for construction for a lager shoppen, which is which a storage, is a storage unit. unit. And, and you can build up to two. Yes, for, for uh, one tool, one wood. That's now, pretty sweet. That is fancy. I have two wood and two tools. Now, and I can build two shoppen. Unfortunately, so Sarah could uh, now man those uh, storage units because they also require a green guy to be present to, to be usable. Um, she could have put both of her guys on, on there now, uh, but since she already has committed her second guy, she can now only move one guy so I can to one of the away. storage units to if Maybe. she wants to activate it. If she does not move the guy right now to the storage unit, she cannot use the additional space, uh, which probably won't matter that much because... So uh, I'm going to go there and then I'm going to go here and I'm going to fill my fancy new storage unit with two wood. Yes. Um, which brings us to the end of the year. Now, uh, we now check if someone else uh, has been using uh, this space here to uh, to become the new start player, which didn't change, I so I'll keep it. No, I did oh, you take, did? Okay. I already I, took it from you. I didn't, I didn't pay attention to it. Well, that's no problem, at, at least I pay attention. Hmm. I'm winning. Uh, now the, the uh, new starting player will at these three buildings or new market spaces. There's only one rule to, to adding them. They have to touch two other tiles um, at the same time. So we do have another of these. We get two wood. So I'm going to put that there. Oh, fancy schmancy. I'm going to put the clay production here. And this is a very nice one. It makes a production thing. It's kind of, kind of um, uh, expensive, but you can put a green, a yellow, or a red dude in there yes, and, to work. And uh, for endgame scoring, um, if you put a red guy on, on that thing... Um, 16. That's a lot of points. 16 uh, now, per dude. What we can, can do now is to reallocate our guys. So I will now use that uh, moment to uh, commit my green guy to my hunting hut. Um, and then we... Uh, you, you're good? I'm good. Uh, then we have to key, uh, pay sustenance. Uh, now, the green guys don't require anything, but if we had yellow guys on here, we would have to spend food to keep them sustained. Now, f paying food for that is a, a, a little bit uh, different from anything else because you can actually pay that from uh, a silo. Uh, and you don't necessarily have to keep that in, in your storage unit. That is one of the few exceptions where from the rule that you have to have stuff in your storage units to make use of that. Uh, after we have paid for uh, the sustenance, we go into production where all of our buildings that produce something do so. So in my case, I have a, a little, I get a little food oh, item placed place on here. Right? Oh, no, you didn't. I thought you have the first of it too. And then our uh, our forges also generate us three new tools. The blacksmiths now, are smithing. Now you uh, immediately may see here that I placed the, the newly produced food item I as well as Sarah uh, placed her wood item onto the building that produces that. Now. Uh, those buildings also act as a buffer, keeping the the goods there uh, as long as you want. But um, they can never store more goods on there than the than the place can uh, produce. So, uh, if I leave this on for a full year and this goes back into production, it does not produce a second food unit unless I move the first one away. So that is something that you know, should keep me in uh, incentivized to eating. to build more storage units to move them out and then have this uh, tile produce more stuff. Um, 
again, you cannot pay for things um, unless uh, keeping people alive, so to speak, to, so keeping them fed. Um, Sarah, for example, cannot use the two wood tiles uh, that her uh, whatever forest, forestry um, has produced to pay for a building. To use those two wood tiles, <coughs> she has to move them over to, let's say, her general storage unit. Um, but that gives you some good ability to do that. Then, then we move here. Yes. Then second we, year, and then we get a new market card. We, we start. We start a new year. Um, the new market card lets us sell food and clay, but it gr gives us uh, wood if we want to, and uh, we can build the ranger's guy's hut of only one, but uh, at least if you don't want to travel down here, you can use the market action to do that. Now, it's Sarah's turn to start, and um, you have seen the entire loop of the game. Um, you keep on doing that until you finish the fifth year and uh, if you just want to play one epoch as we have set up here you would then go forward and count uh, how many victory points you have for that you count the buildings that you have the coins that you got and at the very last turn you check uh, how many workers of which type you have in buildings uh, that are doing actual work. So, for example, these two green guys on my board wouldn't give me any victory points at the end of the game. However, this guy uh, over here in the, in the hunting hut would be worth victory points. And as I said, green guys are worth less than red guys. So during the, the game, you want to try to convert green to yellow or yellow to red guys. Eight points plus two workers. Hmm. That would be twelve, if I remember correctly. Goods are goods are worth nothing at the end of the game. So you really want to build something and and use that. Oh, these uh, some of these cards, if you're able to play them, are also worth victory points. Others maybe not. Uh, that all depends on um, on what you can can get. Um, that is essentially if you're playing one epoch. If you play a second epoch, you would uh, replace this card with a new one. There's some more setup rules. Uh, later epochs add more markets or uh, you're also getting uh, more uh, of these buildings that get added, uh, which introduce new technologies, new resources. Um, as you see, you, you're starting out with wood and clay and uh, you will then slowly shift over to brick and to these planks. And from there you will go to, I think, clothing, fabric, fabric and ore and um, iron or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the, in theory, you can play a game over four epochs uh, if you are so inclined and have the time to, to do that. Um, or you can start in Epoch 2 and start off with a little head start and then have an already advanced tech tree to do that. Um, you can pretty much save yes. Epoch 1 uh, in a bag and then come back the next day and play Epoch 2 and save it again. Uh, you don't have to, uh, well, decide from the beginning if you ever will play era four or not um you're pretty um it's up to you and yes. what you like on a on a certain day and while this very modular and uh, i just want to want to highlight why this looks like your kind of run-of-the-mill worker placement resource management games it has some interesting twists in there with that entire storage system uh, how you move stuff around that you have these buffers that are on the buildings um then you, uh, do, uh, more, uh, as the game progresses, you will upgrade your buildings. You can uh, typically up upgrade uh, uh, one of these guys either to a bigger version that gives you three green guys for this one building, or uh, you can yeah. exchange that to something that gives you a yellow guy instead of a green guy. And then you can upgrade that either to having three yellow guys or move it over to a red guy. So, you are really transforming your colony into something bigger with more space to expand and get all that. And um, 
the foreign colonies add an interesting twist to that by giving you more gameplay opportunities. Um, the four that we put out there, I purposefully chose those because they are quite different. Um, but you have other colonies that give you a bonus in, in certain things or give you free resources. Uh, and you just draw them at random. If you're playing four epochs, you even get a fifth colony in, in there which also makes things interesting. And as you can see, progressing uh, or upgrading the colonies also gives you victory points. So that's a nice bonus on, mm -hmm. on there. Um, the game is, um, well, you can play it solo actually uh, and up to four players. It uh, says uh, for uh, colonists age 12 and up. And it says it's it's taking 30 to 240 minutes. Now, uh, that... So don't spoil it. <laughs> that greatly depends on... On how many uh, epochs How many play. players you have and how many epochs you're, yeah. you're playing. Yeah. Um, I'd say an hour per... No, half an hour or an hour up to an hour, depending on how many... Uh, no, uh, I don't let's see. Maybe, maybe in the in the funny stories and uh, yeah, I will played, share a bit um, more because we recorded timing uh, when just the two of us played, or when we played with four players for uh, uh, a specific amount of uh, epochs that we played. How many new players? How many season players? Blah blah blah. So okay. uh, we're gonna come back to the time and also, give you an idea there, just from our experiences. In case you're wondering, there's actually parts of this board that you can remove and then place additional storage yeah, there's like, uh, pieces in, in you there. see, no glare, uh, no glare. Or here, um, where, you, where you can then upgrade yeah. uh, your thing. In fact, if you're using this, uh, the, the colony of the storage guys, uh, at some point uh, your silo and your storage units will go together and just form one giant storage unit uh, that you then can can use without yeah. the distinction what's in there. Yeah, the upgrade after that would be a shipping container. Yes. Uh, also, I think, uh, if I recall correctly, uh, if you fully upgrade your storage stuff with that colony, you go to something like one space and then has capacity to store 24 goods or something like that. Yeah. Just to give you an idea how... Uh, large the this entire endeavor is getting yeah. uh, uh, over if you ever have played sim city back in the day on the computer it, this is pretty much the same thing where it exhilarates at uh, at a certain point and you really have to deal with I, a shitload of uh, cardstock i i think uh, an, uh, or another another way uh, or another good comparison would be the Siedler, the settlers uh, and, and i have i think i haven't played that because that's that's more you have individual guys that you oh, send to to oh, do okay, stuff and that has a similar feel here with you First, for one, you have to kind of, and that sounds that's, very that's, dehumanizing, oh. but you have to increase your workforce on the one hand, but then also your, your tech tree kind of yeah. stuff where you yeah. get stuff. Let's uh, transition super smoothly into likes and dislikes. Yes. And, and keep going. I'll drink my coffee while oh, you say. I, I say? I, okay. Sure. Good. Good, good. Uh, well, um, this is a very fun game. Uh, it, it does actually scratch a certain itch with my personal taste of uh, what I want to game. Um, yes, it is a worker placement and yes, it is also action selection. But the thing is, um, you might be stopped or um, let's say it might you might be handicapped by other players standing at one spot and you can maybe not afford to go to a certain spot uh, where somebody else is standing so you have to either uh, go totally different with what you thought you might do that turn to not have an empty turn uh, or you really have to pay and uh, even calculate uh, having a payment for other players um, down that uh, well sit on a spot that you so badly wanted to go to and that uh, drives forward your strategy and your idea on what you want to do on your board. And that kind of stays the same throughout all of the games and all of the epochs, but depending on how many players and depending on what tiles come up first, there might be a bit more hogginess on a certain 
spaces in the beginning or you just might spread out because there is enough where everybody can go and say oh this is valuable I want to do this and this and the other one wants to go to a totally different corner of the colony and do something else and you never know unless you have the market down you see the, oh that's what's gonna come up uh, this turn so I like that it's not a hundred percent um predictable mm -hmm. on how things come up and by by uh having the three next um market spaces open you can kind of already yeah. strategize ahead but uh only after so many games you know exactly which tiles come up in what era on the market so you know okay that and that one is still in the pile and you can have that in the back of your mind and uh, that is for um, once you get the gist of the game and once you're not overwhelmed anymore with so many cardstock and so many meeples and so many things that come with the game. It's like a caverna thing. That's the second building stone to your house. After caverna, this is the second one. Third one is Feast of Odin. Just saying. You got a solid foundation it's there. Feast for Odin. That's the German word. Feast for Odin is the English game. Oh, we can also eat Odin. Quite yummy. No, no cannibalism here? Okay, I'm just saying. But, um, yeah, once you get the general gist of this, um, you can actually focus on uh, planning way more ahead in your moves and be um, not only the winner, but want to win with a certain amount of victory points or something. So there's enough in the game to keep you... Um, strategizing and stuff over the years to come uh, if you well play this game you can also just play laid back like we do for example yes we're uh, quite uh, let's say competitive when we play but uh, we do not mark it in the calendar when we made a shitty move on uh, our game and maybe we're not optimal with the way we played and just enjoy ourselves so you can also play that way and still enjoy this game a lot so it's yes it is a heavy euro and i like that a lot but it has that lightness in there that um maybe doesn't make you feel as overwhelmed as other games do uh, that come with multiple mechanisms, uh, area control or uh, action selection and worker placement. I think it's it, yeah, it looks since, like a lot, but it is since, so simple. Yeah, and, and it it kind of grows with you while exactly. playing it and uh, making it... Exactly. The t taking it in is a little bit easier than... Uh, yeah. Or, yeah, I think it, exactly. Uh, that's exactly why I like it so much. You don't get the 200 square foot board right away mm. and all the options that are going to come up in our 10 of this game. But you start small and then you grow and it, it that's what it doesn't... Or that's the point where it's not overwhelming at all, but you kind of learn mm -hmm. To uh, well, grow with this game, nicely said, honey. I like that. Yeah, the um, I I have to say I I also like this very much. Although I very strongly recommend playing this once or twice to get a feel for it, and then kind of starting to think about getting yeah, yeah. getting better. But it's one of those games that um, even though at first I was like, man, I, that makes me feel really stupid uh, because I still don't really know how to generate victory points reliably. But it kind of sticks with me. So this is one of the uh, games where the, even after playing it, it just keeps it's going on in the back of my mind. So maybe I, I should have gone this or next time I want to try this. And that typically is a good sign for me, at least, uh, when it comes to these games. What I really like is this market area going around. Now, I um, I also like games like Caverna or, as Sarah said, well, we haven't talked about Feast for Odin yet, but th those have this, here's your action panel and you may choose to do something and everything's on here. I really like that this is more organically mm -hmm. Uh, well, growing. growing out and uh, this no pesticides this actually 
has to me a feeling of there is a, a colony or there's a village or a city that is building building out and um, becoming bigger giving you more opportunities more things to do while also having this aspect here of um setting up your own little work unit um reminds me actually and uh, I, the, the, I don't know if this came out the same year as anachrony but i think this came out one the year before anachrony no this came out last essen so the, yeah so same as anachrony so the same as anachrony where you have these you have your own player board where you can generate resources or you have this central area that also is able to generate resources but the, there you have the competition going in yeah. um component wise i must say i mean there's a lot in this a lot of cardboard but also a let lot me of, put it in the center just and, to show you the pile and there's more yeah. And more, and more. <laughs> what you didn't see off camera. And more. <laughs> yeah, it's. So yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Tada! Quick shot, and, and now we're back to that camera. And it's and it's and it's a four-player game. So all of this is for four players. So you might think Caverna is, I think, goes up to six or to eight players. Yeah, and, something like that. Uh, and yeah, this. Uh, this is a biggie. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you you could you could make the point that um, this is uh, the first two epochs are the main game, and then you have expansions to four epoch yeah, three and four yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's uh, that's kind of a, yeah, that's actually a good comparison. I like that. Um, but the, you you're getting a lot of game for yeah. for for what it's yeah, worth. Yeah. Um, now the I have to say the the artwork is. Functional. It's it's nothing where I where I would go crazy and say wow this is so super thematic. It is. Do you miss it or would you? Did you want super thematic I, one? I mean, I might. I mean, if you with those cards, it looks uh, sometimes a little bit too simplistic or okay. uh, in this case. But it uh, looks it, Euro gamey to me. No, it looks also a little bit blurry. Oh, uh, which okay. which I think is, yeah. I mean, on the other hand, the iconography is good to read. So even though you might not see, uh, be able to read what this thing th says, uh, the you can um, see the color and the everything. icons. Yep. The icons uh, immediately tell you, first of all, what can you build and what does the thing I can build produce. So that it's easy to parse when it's in, mm. in front of you. Um, yeah, you don't get overwhelmed. Which is good because some sometimes if you have a lot of icons with with a game, either the meaning gets lost uh, if it's too obscure. And I think they do a really good job of, at communicating to you what this thing does. Uh, and also, it looks more complicated as it is. I mean, you mm -hmm. already said it. It's once you get in there, you only have three actions each half year, uh, so there's not that much to do. Yeah. And this and you cannot jump around the whole market. It you. Yeah. Space, you space wise, you're very constricted, and this, well, yeah, this that, that comes more into the 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 more uh, thinky part. Then becomes that puzzle of how are you efficiently using your exactly. storage units, um, the how the buffering works. When do you want to commit your workers to the things? Do you want to immediately move the guy to the building, uh, or do uh, you want to wait a bit? Or is it is it only important in the production phase so you can do that at the end of the year and maybe not pay the uh, the food cost for, for, for him right away or if you have to um, which is uh, more with the yellows and the red work yes so yes. so it's it is as much uh, uh, juggling your logistics as well as uh, then trying to have a plan to to build yeah. stuff out so, so if you ever want to go uh, work at a logistics company like FedEx or DHL, you should play a round of that. Uh, there's one thing that I really, really like that I haven't mentioned that yet. And then there's one where I'm like, oh, it could be even cooler with that. Uh, the one thing that I really, really like is the manual, Z, plural, because, can I please? It comes with this one here, which is a whole a booklet about the first game so it it's it pretty much um, a, is with you with an, a total example playthrough of the first um, uh, epoch 
and uh, that makes it just so much more accessible and you are maybe even less panicked to take a take a look at the game and all the uh, other manuals that come with it by, by the way these are the other five colonies that we ha didn't have here yep. um, as I said the some give you uh, production stuff or also some kind of storage space or free goods um, or a free goods storage space and some different guys like uh, some introduce new meeples that uh, well, uh, are some meeples, somewhere but, out there uh, they're in here uh, which um, which can be used on the ac action spaces to to do something more interesting there, um, and uh, uh, something I also like about the manual is that it uh, not only walks you through the steps of how the game is played, but at each step it says if you're playing in Epoch One, this is important. This is if you're in Epoch Two, this might be important. If you have this type of uh, foreign colony in the game, this is important, which is a really, yeah. really good way to um, play by the book if you want yeah, to. Yeah, it's, it's nicely cross-referenced right away. You don't search too much. Uh, you, yes. We never hit uh, the FAQ or something page. We were totally fine with the manual. The one thing um, that would have made this game even cooler would have been something like a tray insert because for all the things that we showed you here, yeah. yes, we have zip locked and uh, yes, we have those little tiny plastic trays that we always put out. But this would be a game that would benefit from uh, from like a little uh, tray or something like a sorting thing for maybe beads or screws that go to your storage unit shop in your country. It would benefit from that or well make it uh, make your own with uh, some nice uh, plywood or something um, that would really help because then you can really play out of the box pretty much and not have to sort everything. Uh, especially with the houses and the different eras, it would be very helpful. Now the Feast of or for Odin, I'm not sure what it's called. It comes with like a very simple um, plastic tray and I think uh, colonists would have benefited from something like that yeah. too. So uh, maybe that's a trend that's gonna come in the next years for all the super big um, in games that come with a lot of tiny little cardstock or wooden pieces. Yep. Um, I just want to want to show you. Uh, then later on, you are building build. So this is one of the ones that takes a red worker uh, in. Uh, that's actually Epoch Three, uh, which, uh, for example, increases your workers' range as long as you have some guy on here. So that's that's an example t for a building where you want to put someone maybe immediately once yep. once you build it on, on here um, to do that. Um, what any else? Other, any other wise thoughts? Cause I, I think done. I think the, the only thing that might be unusual depending on what your programming experience is is this idea of having this buffer um, with, the, with the production units. But that is something um, you typically should be able to grasp really quickly. It's not that complicated. No, not at all. It's, it's just uh, you have three different types of, of spaces to store units and they behave a little bit differently. Um, but it's certainly something that um, should be easy easy to grasp uh, uh, after a, a play or two. Um, but as I said, you want to play this a couple of times to, to get a better idea of what generates victory points. Where, where do you want to go? Um, what is important early on? Um, it's actually kind of nice that you're kind of in the first test game with every time you play in Epoch for the first time. You may, you can choose to play yeah. first number one, then number two, number three, number four, or you can choose to play number one a couple of times and then go on to mm -hmm. Epoch two and then you have a first game again and master that mm -hmm. step pretty much. So I like that you uh, are not clubbed with the rules over the head but the game is very open to how you want to play it it's yes. not <clears throat> forced on you that's yes. it's very it's quite rare for these kinds of games that yeah. uh, the 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 only thing if i had to give it a minus points as i said the the artwork is 
okay. It's it's not nothing nothing to get wild about. But uh, the only other thing is maybe the fiddliness of the bits, uh, especially for setup, and that you have to kind of then go through and order everything. So if you don't have some storage solution to um, you can uh, go to the no colony for no pun intended. But <laughs> Sorry, if you have have something that uh, uh, makes your life a little bit easier, yeah, um, a Home Depot or something should should do it. it there or like a like so, a craft shop like Michaels or something. They do have trays for beads and stuff. So that should half fit. half an hour playtime sounds ridiculous, um, but in actual playtime. That is not too far off. I think yeah, we had a player. two player game. Uh, shall we quickly rate and then talk exactly about the time yes. thing in the experiences? Yes. Yeah? So rate with me. One, two, three. I'll, I put it there. I, yeah, I, a smidge, a smidge thing, thingy uh, I, I really, because of the tray. I, I, like, I like this game. If I have the itch to play a game like like this, but there's also other games I would easily um, play for that. And while it has this unique aspect uh, with the the storage stuff and and the buffering and uh, this um, building your action slash market space, these are also things that for some one part or another I can find in other games so mm, there's nothing not as much for me there's yeah. nothing where say I have to play this game in in particular over something else so if if we would mm. say let's play a, a heavy resource management worker placement game I, I wouldn't decline playing that but uh, I also wouldn't then say it we have to play the colonists over anything else for some reason so that's if that makes sense there's, that's just my gut feeling well it's a too. bit shorter to play than say anachrony yeah. and stuff um but anachrony but, has a cool theme. But that is way more... Uh, well, it scratches the itch of uh, time travel disruption kind of a thing. Yeah. This one is more the um, uh, itch of uh, do the best with what with what you can get in a certain turn. Because, like I said, people can block you. Mm -hmm. But let's move into funny stories and experiences and talk about time and all that stuff. So, um, we played it. <laughs> Let's let's Couple talk. Let's talk about our tutorial game. Oh, we actually didn't have to read the tutorial or the yes. rules for the first game. We had to do we that were, later. We were, we were super taught. fortunate that someone took the time to Thank show you, us Joe. how how this game is played. And uh, we got um, not only the uh, introduction game, we got the whole game. So we were at BGG uh, Con last year and uh, our dear friend Joe had also bought uh, the game at Spiel just like we did. And uh, he had played it once or twice between Spiel and uh, BGG Con and he said, you know, I'm really, uh, I really want to play uh, like all the four epochs in one go, and he brought his copy to uh, BGG Khan and he asked, um, Would you guys maybe want to play with me? And I was like, Yeah, sure. We were bought it as well, so we can learn the game. And That's and a he, great thing, right? And, and I, I, I'm pretty sure I heard him say, Well, the game box says 240 minutes uh, maximum. Let's not, uh, or let's stay on the on the safe side and say, it's probably not take four hours. It's probably more like six hours that it's yeah. going to take. Are you ready to commit? It's like it, yeah, sure. Yeah, I yeah, mean, I guess. well, it was the evening before the official yes. um, opening of no, it was the first evening of the con, right? It was not the evening before I, the con I don't, started. I don't, I don't remember time because we played in the uh, ballroom. Time started to blur. Uh, it was the first evening of the, the, uh, where the con had started. So um, we sat down and we had a uh, fourth player with us. So three players didn't uh, know anything about the game, were playing the game for the first time. We are learning, yes. And one person had uh, played the game. So Joe was the most versed in uh, the colonists thing. So uh, our one uh came and went, expected. Hour two, came and went, expected. Three, four, five, and six, came and went, 
like expected. And then? Number seven, eight, and eight and a half, 3 a.m. in the morning, yeah. we finished being, being um, totally exhausted. Yeah, and, and that... <laughs> Jet lag and all that stuff also going on. And un unfortunately, and that is... Uh, here's <laughs> Here's the really important advice. If you are a, a, a bitter, grumpy guy like I am. Oh, bad. Um, if you are playing this for the first time, don't play all four no, uh, epochs. No. Don't even, I, would, I would say don't even play two. Um, reason for that is they really build upon each other. Meaning yeah. if you're playing this for the first time or maybe even the second time and you don't exactly know what you're doing uh, and you don't set up your game correctly, um, you will find out that after, let's say, an hour, um, you still have an hour to play and you probably won't have a chance to catch up to anybody else because yeah. you uh, made some bad decisions or um, you didn't account for what are you actually going to do. So uh, just to give an example, at first I thought, well, you have these uh, foreign colonies actually uh, and they give victory points. So um, I guess this is one way to, to win the game, one, one path to victory by focusing on, on a colony or maybe two colonies and building them out uh, to maximum power. And uh, then from there you can go, which wasn't really the case. They are more like those little extra things they provide, but they are not the main focus. The main yep. focus is getting guys and keeping getting them employed. Getting as, as many red guys employed as possible yes. and get them fed and, uh, as well. I mean, I, I, after those eight hours, it was just exhausting, but I'm, I clearly remember that after six hours or something, I kind of went into the... Era 4. Six hours yes. was the beginning of Era 4. And, and in fact, I have to, I have to say uh, there's a big down thing to this game, which I actually forgot to mention in the likes and dislikes, that you cannot do a lot at all if it's not your turn. Um, yeah, if you there's... well, if you have three players that don't know shit about that game at the table, it takes way longer. But the game we played mm. later, uh, where um, we didn't only have first players at the table, that went way quicker. And here's um, in, but in general, uh, if you're having four players at the table, you will be sitting there and waiting for yeah. Yeah, exactly. People. Because the one thing uh, you could now argue, well, people can plan their strategy while it's not their turn. Correct. But since somebody can block your spot where you want to go and you maybe not having the resources to give to the other player, yeah. you're kind of screwed. So uh, we very uh, pretty much at every game said, OK, we're not going to plan anymore. It doesn't make any sense. You just get frustrated instead of looking at yeah. the board once it's your turn I... and then you bam 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 go I and certainly if you... had it multiple times that someone um that i was planning saying okay i could go there and then do this and then i could go there and do this and then uh both options for some reason yeah. I, either the first half or the second half of what i wanted to do or, of, of those three yeah. turns uh, and that's the thing that i said do the best with what you got and that kind of is I, or I don't remember that part in other uh, worker placements um, I mean, I mean, developing your that, shit kind that's, of games. That's also something you have with uh, Caverna, where someone is taking your your space away and or uh, taking an action that yeah, you wanted to take. But there's a similar action available for you somewhere. For for, for these, it also it you also, can only get the first array on one spot. Yeah, that's so, some, at least in that era. Some spaces are there in, in multiple ways, but you're not only uh, locked by having maybe the resources, but yeah. sometimes you're locked because uh, or locked out of a decision because you just literally cannot get there. Yeah. Um, because it's too far away, or uh, you would have to pay stuff on the way there, and then that cost may just work out but if then another player is standing on that yeah you um, just cannot go there correct yeah. um but the once we played it just the two of us so between bgg con and uh, us playing here again it was quite some time we had so many games that we uh, had to play and uh this one didn't get table time for a while but uh 
though we had still memories of the of the main concept of the game, we had to read up on the rules mm. again, and that was uh, at least. Yeah, it's over half a year. Yeah, it it, it but it was past. so easy to do, and mm. from. Uh, for that game, it was just the two of us, Epoch 1, uh, from the time we started playing to, hey, we got all the notes on that little pad and now we can tally up our points. It was exactly two hours. So uh, we played it after that on a Sunday with our game group. There we had two new players and the two of us knowing things. Now, I don't want to be mean here but uh, it was one of the days where uh, Tina was a bit uh, let's say tired and it took her longer than usual to make decisions on where she wants to go and how to be super efficient so even with that and four players and two new players Tina and Valentin being the new players we exactly had two hours from the point that we started to me writing down and tallying up all the points yeah. on the notepad so it felt it like two weeks but it exactly was it feels long. pretty long because while well, you have downtime and for whatever reason the human mind then thinks oh this is gonna take forever but it's actually not it was just as fast with four players mm. than it was with two I, in I this think, case I think this is, so, this is where they there is an actual similarity between colonists and anachrony uh, that uh, yeah, this but they play with that. The stretches thing. time. Yeah, yeah. Mm, until the comet comes. No, I don't think there's a comet. No, no, no. no? Maybe. And, and, Maybe uh, in era five that and, we just don't have. By, it. by the way, since we mentioned video games, I am aware that there's a game called Colonization, and probably this is closer to this game. But I have. I don't think I ever played it. I've seen it, but uh, that passed by me. I was uh, Sarah, just yeah. a Sim City and uh, Settlers kind of guy. Yeah. So uh, these are all the. Oh, by the way, and my my strategy. I just want to uh, point that out because I was blocked by all the other players in era two and three, particularly. I remember in the first game, what I did is I collected resources, went to the market and sold them. So I had a lot of coins and most of my victory points actually came from uh, I'm, well, gathering shit and selling it at the market for all the coins that are there. My strategy was to lose and oh, it worked out perfectly yeah. multiple times. I Joe think was I, so happy that I, you that you could uh, work with your strategy like you wanted. Yes, I think I lost every game we played so far of this. I think I made second place tied. I don't remember if you game. or I won once when just the two of us played. I think you, you won. No, you I did? Won. I'm pretty sure you won. I know the Odin, but I don't know this one. Oh, whatever. It doesn't matter to me. Um, shall we go into the last little itty bitty bit yes, of sure. the video? I mean, this is a this, this is a meaty game, um, yeah. and I think you probably know if you want to go go into that or or not. Maybe you um, can try it somewhere first if you're unsure. If you like the theme of building building a colony and um, like having this resource production, resource upgrading, building your little houses and um, doing doing all that in a still rather short game. And this is not reaching civilization uh, style the timelines where, where you really have to keep on going for a long time. Yeah, to... you've got to be uh, retired to play that game. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's uh, while, no while we make nothing. it sound, sound that it takes long, I think the one game we played with two it just took us an hour. And no, it took us two hours. Exactly. Without just with, us two? Yeah, and that was the first game after not have playing uh, have have it played we, for a long time and we looked... Didn't we play it a second time with two? No, that oh, was okay. uh, with four. Okay. We played with, but, you know, uh, but that was also two hours where he said, oh, this felt well, way longer and I yeah. looked at the time so I was, no, uh, uh, hmm. it's two hours. So mm -hmm. I was surprised by that. But anyway, let's uh, have a teaser, folks, shall we? Uh, it's time for another Draw for Initiative painting. And the game that we're going to publish next Wednesday, 9 a.m. CET on this channel, is a competitive game that Colonies. is... No, that is very importantly focusing on numbers and the number three is very 
significant in any strategy uh, any player can have. Bejeweled. No, we don't have Bejeweled, the board game. Are you sh There's actually a, a Bejeweled style. Board, well, there's board a board wedding game. anniversary um, coming up. Just saying. The number three is important. It's a competitive game. There are two hints that I can give you and you exactly know which one it is. So I want to keep you guessing for a bit. Um, I really don't know what which one. There's a lot of numbers. And three is a significant one for strategies of both uh, players. Some people might be reminded of bingo. Um, it's mainly cards that are on the table. It's actually a very small game. You can travel with it. I, it fits in my purse. Yeah, I was. Um, I, I was. I was thinking about. Very, we bought it this year. I, I was thinking about a game that that involves uh, or that whose which title involves uh, a very precious stone, but I don't think it's no, that because no, that's, it's not that. So no diamonds. No, no. The number three is very significant. Uh, it's a two-player game, and we bought it this year. And uh, it played a role in our time disruption line thing. Um, there was something very confidential in there. Mm. I, don't, I, I don't know, but this this might might be a uh, uh, well board game guessing for runaways. Keep going. I don't want to swear, but I think the Latin people called it Tempus Fuck It or something. <laughs> oh, Fug It. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't Anglo-Saxon the Latin you, language. So if you... Sorry, that's just my German accent. It's uh, it's obviously a very hard G in uh, Fug It. Mm -hmm. It's not Fugu. It's not the fish. Bloop. But it's... Uh, yeah, it's uh, a crappy times, Temple Fugit, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, and that's the question to... Uh, that's the answer to all the questions in the universe. No, I thought no? I, I thought it's, uh, the, the the actual answer to, to your hint giving is it was the guy with the prosthetic arm. Yeah, maybe. Who knows? Find if you've out. seen if you've seen the the Kimbles, then you know which game we're talking about. Well, you can check out on Wednesday if you are correct. You can also leave a guess in the comment section below uh, for our very um, personal amusement. We will definitely answer you very cryptically if you are correct or not with your guess. And uh, we're going to see you next Sunday on the Gamers Coach with a new game. And until then, have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful rest of the weekend. Enjoy the week. I hope it's not very stressful for you. Uh, maybe you got some time to sit out in the sun and enjoy a pina colada or something. And uh, come back to the indoors next Sunday for the next Gamers Coach. Have fun, folks. Take good care. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Can I have my own colony now? The colony with the fridge and the food? No? No. Oh. <laughs> Komm mal her. Du ähm, hast ein bisschen Augenbrauen. Dings, soll ich dich mal anwedeln kurz hier? Ich kann ja so ein Kühleisen dran haben. <lacht> It's gonna be bloopers. <lacht> Or more. Can I have two of those? No. Okay, go.